Earth's ice melts and sea levels rise. I'll explain why. Approximately 71% of our planet is covered by the world's oceans, which hold about 97% of Earth's water and are responsible for roughly half of primary production. Oceans and the cryosphere provide essential services, including food and fresh water, renewable energy, health and well-being, culture, trade and transportation. Yet they also pose significant medium to long-term risks. Until just a few decades ago, we had limited awareness of how oceans and ice were affected by climate change and in turn how they influenced the natural, cultural and social landscapes of our world. However, in recent years, we've been abruptly confronted with a tragic threat to populations living near coastlines. While nearly 10% of the world's population, approximately 670 million people, reside in high mountain regions and around 4 million live in the Arctic, it's actually the coasts that are the most densely populated areas on our planet. In 2020, 28% of the global population, 1.9 billion people, lived within 100 kilometers of the coast and less than 100 meters above sea level, including 17 major cities, each housing over 5 million residents. A situation that, in the not-too-distant future, might lead to your grandchildren to become interested in real estate listings like this. Charming apartment for sale in a new and delightful residential area of Paris, complete with parking, garden, and sea view. Unmissable. Climate observations and projections leave little room for doubt. The global mean sea level has been steadily rising since the early 20th century, with a pronounced acceleration in recent decades. This trend could lead to the loss of numerous coastal areas across the globe by 2100, with cities that are currently far from the coast being forced to reinvent themselves as seaside metropolises. Given the gravity and immediacy of this issue, it's worth delving into the more alarming aspects of this framework. This video focuses precisely on the mechanisms underpinning this phenomenon, providing some more precise figures about the future we're facing. With the advent of the satellite era, numerous missions have been designed to measure sea level as accurately as possible, not only along coastlines but also in open waters where traditional tide gauges can't be installed. Among all satellite missions dedicated to sea level measurements, one of the most crucial is the one hosting the GRACE, Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment Instrument. This mission consists of two twin satellites that measure Earth's gravitational field anomalies using satellite altimeters. The experiment has generated an enormous amount of data that scientists continue to analyze, resulting in numerous scientific papers. Using the GRACE data, scientists have observed that the average sea level is rising, with a mean annual increase rate of 3.2 millimeters. However, it's important to note that this figure represents the entire ocean surface and sea level doesn't rise uniformly everywhere. In some regions, sea levels are rising, while in others, they are falling. Furthermore, the rate of sea level rise varies across different areas, with some places experience rates up to three times higher than the global average. It's worth mentioning that the rate of sea level rise measured by satellites is significantly higher, around one millimeter per year, compared to measurements obtained from tide gauges. The reasons for this difference aren't entirely clear, but it's likely due to some systematic bias or error in satellite measurements. What is nearly certain is that as global temperatures continue to rise, all the ice on our planet is at risk of melting and contributing to the volume of seawater. However, not all ice is the same, and the consequences of its melting can vary significantly. Let's start by examining minor ice formations, such as glaciers found in mountain ranges. We know that these formations melt somewhat every summer, but in winter, snow and rainfall typically replenish the lost ice. However, due to global warming induced temperature increases, recent summers have seen above average melting coupled with reduced snowfall. Consequently, mountain glaciers are retreating further and the product of their meltwater, which is water, flows permanently into the sea, contributing to rising sea levels. Mountain glaciers hold about 1% of all the ice on Earth. According to recent studies, if all 215,000 mountain glaciers on Earth were to melt entirely, 
it would result in an instant sea level rise of approximately 0.32 meters. Then there's sea ice, such as the ice that forms the Arctic polar ice cap. How many times have we seen photos of a massive polar bear stranded on a small piece of drifting ice on the internet, in newspapers, or on TV? And how many times have we thought, poor bears, they're not doing so well with this global warming issue? Perhaps it's time to be concerned not only about the biodiversity of the Arctic, but also about what lies beneath the paws of Arctic creatures, the sea ice. Unfortunately, the data is unequivocal. The last 40 years have witnessed an inexorable disappearance of Arctic sea ice, primarily due to global warming. What was once a scene reserved for science fiction movies, a nearly ice-free Arctic Ocean, is now becoming a reality for parts of the year. Before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our daily videos. Sea ice, known as the Arctic sea ice, is a floating mass of ice, typically less than 3 meters thick, formed in polar regions due to the frigid temperatures that freeze the surface sea water. It forms when ocean water, being saline, freezes at around minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, the ice that forms is fresh water, because during the freezing process, minerals and salts remain in solution, leaving only pure water to freeze. The largest sea ice formations are found in the Arctic Ocean around the North Pole and in the Southern Ocean around Antarctica, where they are permanent, growing during winter and receding in summer. In contrast, sea ice appears seasonally in regions like the Baltic Sea, Hudson Bay, and other coastal areas in the Northern Hemisphere, warming in winter and melting in spring and summer. Since 1979, the extent of Arctic sea ice has been decreasing by approximately 83,000 square kilometers each year, equivalent to an area the size of a small European country. The lowest extent was recorded in the dramatic year of 2012, when summer sea ice nearly vanished. While some might see this change as somewhat positive, opening new commercial maritime routes across the Arctic, it's important to consider the broader implications. With less ice, new shorter and more cost-effective shipping routes from the east to the west become available, challenging the traditional Suez Canal route. Simultaneously, it creates more favorable conditions for the exploitation of significant oil and natural gas reserves. According to estimates by the United States Geological Survey, the Arctic Circle region could hold around 30% of the world's untapped natural gas reserves and 13% of its untapped oil reserves. In essence, the interests at stake are so substantial that we are witnessing a veritable Arctic race. However, the situation is not quite as straightforward. As we are about to learn, if Arctic sea ice melts, it signifies a broader thermal process affecting continental ice, which is primarily responsible for rising sea levels. The melting of the Arctic sea ice contributes very little, almost nothing to this phenomenon. To better understand this, envision a glass filled with frozen water or water with ice cubes floating inside. When the ice melts completely, the water level in the glass remains the same. Similarly, the seasonal melting of sea ice, whether due to global warming or the natural ebb and flow of seasons, does not add water to the sea, mainly because sea ice is floating ice. However, not all ice in polar regions is floating sea ice. A substantial portion consists of continental ice, which forms on the polar land masses like Antarctica in the south and Greenland and Iceland in the north. The Antarctic Continental Ice Sheet is the largest single mass of ice on Earth, covering an area of roughly 14 million square kilometers and containing 30 million cubic kilometers of ice, which constitutes about 90% of the Earth's fresh water. If it were to melt entirely, it would lead to a sea level rise of 59 meters. The Greenland Continental Ice Sheet, on the other hand, covers 82% of the island's surface, and if melted would result in a sea level rise of approximately 7.6 meters. In total, the complete melting of all ice on Earth would lead to a sea level rise of about 67 meters. Now, you might wonder whether 67 meters is a lot or a little compared to the average depth of the world's oceans which is approximately 3,700 meters. However, this rise would lead to the loss of thousands of kilometers of coastlines, penetrating up to 50 kilometers inland in some areas. 
But it's not only ice that affects the equilibrium. Another factor to consider in determining sea level rise is the thermal expansion of seawater. It might sound complex, but it's a straightforward physical phenomenon. As a fluid like seawater experiences increasing temperatures, it expands, increasing its volume. Oceans absorb most of the excess heat emitted into the atmosphere due to human activities, about 90%. And because of this, the upper layers of the ocean have seen their temperatures rise by around 0.11 degrees Celsius per decade over the past few decades. This, coupled with a milder warming of the deeper layers, leads to the inevitable expansion of water and, consequently, the increase in mean sea level. But is it really so? Well, it would be if the increase in atmospheric heat quickly affected all the liquid mass of the oceans. In reality, even if the atmospheric temperature globally rose by 5 degrees, an absurd value, but let's exaggerate for clarity, the surface temperature of the oceans would take many decades to rise by the same 5 degrees. However, the underlying layers of the ocean, which make up 99% of its total volume, would take millions of years to do the same due to the extremely poor heat conductivity in such a vast volume of water. In fact, as of today, the average surface temperature of the oceans is around 15 degrees Celsius, while at depth, it's only 3.5 degrees. This difference is because the heat that has warmed the ocean surface since the end of the Ice Age still needs to transfer to the deeper layers. Globally, we can quantify the contribution to the rise in mean sea level due to a volume increase of 1.1 millimeters per year. Most of this contribution, about 0.7 millimeters per year, is due to the volume of water between the sea surface and 700 meters in depth. About 0.1 millimeters per year is due to the volume of water between 700 meters and 3,000 meters in depth, with the remaining portion associated with the rest of the ocean volume. So what does the future hold for us and, more importantly, for our descendants? To imagine this, we need to consider that if sea levels continue to rise at the rate seen in recent years, there could be devastating effects on coastal habitats moving inland. These effects include destructive erosion, flooding of wetlands, contamination of aquifers and farmland by salt water, and the loss of habitats for fish, birds and plants. Rising sea levels are also coinciding with more dangerous hurricanes and typhoons that move more slowly and release more rain, contributing to more powerful storm surges that can sweep away everything in their path. Flooding in low-lying coastal areas is already forcing people to migrate to higher ground, and millions more are vulnerable to the risk of flooding and other climate change-related effects. The prospect of rising coastal waters threatens basic services, such as internet access, because most of the communication infrastructure is located at elevations that could be submerged. These are significant challenges that we and future generations must address as we grapple with the consequences of a changing climate. Most predictions indicate that global warming will likely continue and possibly accelerate, leading to further sea level rise. This means that hundreds of coastal cities will face flooding and inundation, However, predicting when and to what extent sea level rise will occur remains a subject of ongoing research. The most recent special report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimates a sea level rise between 26 and 77 centimeters by 2100, with a 1.5 degree Celsius temperature increase. These numbers are significant and would have a serious impact on many cities along the U.S. East Coast. Another analysis based on European and NASA data predicts a rise of 65 centimeters by the end of this century if current trends continue. As mentioned earlier, if indeed all the ice currently existing on Earth in the form of glaciers and polar ice caps were to melt, sea levels would increase by almost 67 meters, not accounting for the contribution from thermal expansion. This would submerge entire states and countries from Florida to Bangladesh. It's not a scenario that scientists consider likely, and in any case, it would take several centuries to unfold, but it could happen if the world's populations continued to burn fossil fuels indiscriminately. Alternatively, the only hope is that, as many scholars argue, these predictions are all greatly exaggerated, and the observed growth reported by satellites could actually be much smaller than measured. The game is still open, but it wouldn't hurt to start taking better care of our planet 
and paying particular attention to all living creatures, including humans. It's time to stop intensive resource exploitation and factory farming and animal genocide and move away from fossil fuels. With these changes, the rest will follow.